In the 1992 Caulfield Cup in Australia, New Zealand jockey Shane Dye rode the 5 upon 2 favourite Viander Cross. Dye took the long striding gelding extremely wide on the track from the 800 metre marker in search of better ground. Travelling approximately 12 horses wide until straightening, Viander Cross was beaten in a tight finish by Mannerism. So how much ground did the debatable tactic cost? What was the amount of extra ground that Dye possibly covered? The answers, in some degree, are studied by Finn Pari on his website. Now it is inevitable that some horses in the field of runners will be obliged to travel wider than others. Tactics play an important part in race riding, but just how much extra ground is actually covered by travelling wide? Which is truly the shortest way home? Now the majority of the world's race courses have a series of straights connected by curbs. But the configuration of almost all track designs is varied. Some have big sweeping curves such as Newmarket, while some have a straight track through the centre like Longchamp. Others may even have dual direction bends like Goodwood at Epsom, with some open. There are also circulatory tracks like Jebel Ali, and finally there are those that are essentially symmetrical, such as Singapore, Fuchu or Mahalakshmi. The plan of the racecourse below shows the bend from 1000 meters to the turn into the straight at about 450 meters. The white line with the yellow radius is the rail in the true position and where the inside horse would race. The light blue dot and the line in the path of the horse forced to travel 3 meters wide and the light blue line with the yellow light blue dot is the radius of the wider horse. The red line signifies the diameter of the curve. It does not matter which direction your horse is traveling in. If it rounds a bend, curve or turn wider than the horse inside, it has simply traveled further. To find out the actual distance, we need to apply a simple formula which will give us half of the circumference of a circle which represents the bend or turn in the track. This is 2 pi r where r is the radius of the curve and is simply divided by 2. As a starting point, most horses will be between 40 to 80 centimeters wide. So if the radius of a racetrack curve is 100 meters, the formula tells us that the distance of half the circle or the bend will be 314 meters. Now if we take the first example of a radius of 100 meters at the bend and your horse has traveled 1 meter off the fence, that makes it a radius of 101 meters for the entire bend. Therefore, it will have traveled 3.14 meters extra. The math is such that the value of 3.14 remains a constant multiple for every 1 meter which is added to the radius. They'd be travelling a good, you know, four to five lengths more at least, you know. Um, it all depends on the pace too. I mean, you can get slowly run races and if they're caught wide, it doesn't matter so much because it's a, a bit of a sprint home if the horse has got cover. But if it's a truly run race and you've got a horse on the fence, three back on the fence, and you've got one out three wide on his outside, it makes a hell of a difference, especially if it's a truly run race. You know, horses can't sprint when they've been travelling you know, with, with truly run races when they've been travelling so wide. So it does make a good bit of difference, I feel. The chart shows you the extra distance covered by racing wide. So using the example of a 100 meter radius, you will find that for every meter travelled wide, your horse is travelling approximately 3.14 meters extra. So therefore, if you travel 3 meters wide, you are actually travelling nearly 9 meters more in a race enough to make a difference between winning and losing. And in a mathematical sense, while it's easy to calculate this with a symmetrical bend, all said and done, it does reason that when your horse travels wide, it is covering extra ground.